Hello, I'm Sarah and I work in Special Collections. Now, since we're coming up to Halloween, we thought this was a good opportunity to share an uncanny story from our archives. We don't have any specific groups of ghost stories in Special Collections, but you can find them anywhere. Sometimes as an aside in a letter or a memory in a diary entry. Now this seems quite fitting. The accidental survival of these stories shows just how persistent they can be. A good example of this is a family commonplace book that was kept by the Adeen family. Now, this is actually part of our Elizabeth Gaskell collection. We don't really know a lot about the Adeen family themselves. Commonplace books are a sort of scrapbook. They can be filled with all sorts of things recipes, quotes, letters, poems, proverbs. They were a way to compile knowledge and used as an aid for remembering useful information. Each commonplace book is unique, but they almost always include passages found in other texts or copies of letters. It's quite a common type of object to find in an archive. We have over 140 in our collections. Now this particular commonplace book includes a range of quotes, limericks, extracts, and quite a few supernatural stories that were collected by members of the same family between around 1850 and 1910. Many of the ghost stories appear in letters which were kept with the book and they come from various correspondence. And the stories themselves range quite a bit from the moralistic to the really quite gruesome. I'd like to read one for you now. Rockhampton Rectory, Fallfield, Gloucestershire, November the 2nd, 1909. My dear Mrs Fielding, I hope you have not come to the conclusion that I had forgotten my promise to find out all I could about the Lewis corpus and let you know. I did not forget, but when Mr Vaughan, Reverend, was at home, I drove to Pockington to interrogate him. His reply was, I heard the story, but I paid no attention to it. However, he said, my brother can tell you more about it. When I found that the brother was home, I called on him and here begins the tale as detailed to him. The late Bishop Lewis privately confided to his friend, Reverend Dr. Nichols, that he and his wife, Mrs. Lewis, were staying the night at a friend's house. When about midnight and asleep, they were both startled from their sleep by contact with a dead body. At once they sprang out and he lighted a candle and there lay the vile corpus. While they were standing speechless with astonishment, in walked a monk with an attendant and they carried off the interloper. What a pity your friend, Dr. Hmm, was not there. He would have pitched him or her out of the window with a farewell. In the morning at breakfast, how did they spend the intervening time, I should like to know? They recounted their experience to their host, and with apologies for putting them in that room, they said it used to have visitors, but it was a long time since anyone had slept in it, and they had heard no noises. They thought the room had been vacated. Mr. Nichols vows that Bishop Lewis related this to him in strict confidence and would not tell him where it befell him. What do you think of it? I love to masticate such little gems, but this is quite too much. I hope you're well now. Try Dr. Burgess's analgesic balsam for gout. I am very faithfully yours, William Richmond. <laughs>